You want to understand the world, the Rosetta Stone to understanding the news of the day is my new book. It is called The Great Reset. It's available everywhere. Okay, so let's just go through some of the uh, stories here. Venezuela, we now know, are emptying their prisons and sending violent criminals to our border. We had a record 2 million illegals apprehended at our southwest border this year. 2 million that we caught. Probably 3 million is the real total. In that 3 million... um, We had uh, another 12 caught just last month. Another 12. Now, these are special illegals. These are on the terror watch list. Remember you heard a story? There are 24 people that were found, you know, on the terror watch list. Nah. mm -mm. Let me give you the stats on this. In 2017, two people got through that are on the terror watch list. 2018, six. 2019, zero. 2020, last year of, of Trump, two. First year of Biden, 15. And so far this year, 78 from the terror watch list have come through our border that we know of. Chip Roy is with us now. Hello, Chip. How are you, sir? Doing great, Glenn. Uh, great to be on the show, although... Uh, <sighs> not doing great about the state of our border and what it means for your and my home state of Texas or this whole country. But, uh, but uh, blessed to live in this country and keep fighting for it. Um, Chip, uh, by the way, he's the congressman from Texas. I don't think I can take any more of this from, uh, you know, the, the northern states saying, hey, we're not a Texas border town. What the hell does that mean? What does that mean? That they should just take it? Well, it, there is a certain irony in that, right? Uh, you know, listening to the D.C. city councilwoman and the mayor saying, oh, well, you know, we don't have the resources to deal with that. Texas does. So, wait, hold on a second. By resources, you mean all of our towns are getting absolutely overwhelmed and inundated? Our schools having to deal with massive numbers or actually shut down because of bailouts and the danger posed to them in South Texas? Our ranches getting diluted, fence, deluged, fences getting cut, uh, children dying from fentanyl poisoning, uh, you know, people living in stash houses. And then you go look at the Washington, D.C., Glenn. You know, oh, they wake up now and go, oh, my gosh, there were 50 shipped to, to Martha's Vineyard, and we had 100 dropped off at, you know, uh, Kamala Harris's house. There were 73 people found in a stash house in Washington, D.C. in early August. Twelve of them were kids. This is real. It's in our nation's capital. There are uh, cartels. There was a headline in Baltimore just about a month ago about the dangers of cartels uh, engaged in Baltimore. In Virginia, in Culpeper, Virginia talked to a sheriff last week when I was meeting with the moms who have lost their children to fentanyl, and they busted a cartel operation in Culpeper, Virginia, one hour west of our nation's capital. It's happening. This administration knows it. They're lying about it, and they need to absolutely have to face consequences for what they're doing to our country. So, Chip, I mean, I, I, I'm so frustrated I, I could pop a gasket um, when I start thinking about this. They're now comparing the GOP governor's saying that they're like human traffickers. You don't need like human traffickers. You have human traffickers on the border. Human trafficking has never been this bad in America, and the Biden administration is creating and funding those human traffickers. No, that's exactly right. And, and I just want to pause there for a second, right? You know, those of us who love our country, we're people of faith, We're watching human beings being used as political pawns by these Democrats. Yet they then point the finger at Governor Abbott or Governor DeSantis for highlighting the problem by moving people who largely volunteered for it, moving them to another place in the country to essentially wake people up because MSNBC and CNN and The Washington Post and New York Times, and they all refuse to report on it. And there's a block of people in our country who don't know what's going on. You're a listener out there. Stop making nice when you go to your churches and you go to your community groups and you don't want to talk about these things. Tell everybody. Wake people up because your children are dying from the fentanyl as a result of the open borders. Your families are going to get endangered by cartels and gangs. This administration is causing it, but let's be honest. Republicans are allowing it to happen, and that's why I'm calling on ending 
the continued funding of this crap. I don't know how Republicans can fund the very things they campaign against. We shouldn't give one more penny to a Homeland Security or administration that refuses to secure our border. Uh, uh, Amen. Amen. But I don't think Turtle Face has the the courage to do it. Um, Let me ask you about the Soros-funded lawsuit uh, against Florida. Uh, violating these uh, illegals, their constitutional right. They don't have constitutional rights. You don't have constitutional rights. But here's Soros funding this. Well, obviously, and you mentioned with the Soros funded effort, like the lawyers are seeking them out to go, you know, turn them into, uh, again, political pawns. Um, And it's absurd to say that individuals who came to our country uh, illegally, came here making some claims this administration are then dumping them into the United States, endangering our people, that for some reason governors moving them around our country are somehow violating rights that they don't really have under the Constitution. Wait a minute. What is, the, dif- what is the difference between uh, DeSantis or, or uh, Abbott moving these people to Washington, D.C. or uh, Martha's Vineyard in, in the daytime as opposed to the federal government moving them all over the country, well, we don't even know where they go. Yeah, well, that's, that's exactly right. The federal government has been distributing people throughout this country. Let's go a step further. How about every non-governmental organization, every charity, every group and church organization and Catholic charities and all the ones that are neck deep in all of this that are running uh, and putting people into hotels in South Texas that are literally going and coordinating, picking people up and distributing them around the country. And by the way, Glenn, this is really important, okay? People are saying, oh, but they're seeking asylum. Hold on. The vast majority of these right now are not even claiming asylum. They're not even being worked through any adjudication of a claim for asylum. They're literally being brought into a tent, for example, in Eagle Pass. It's four acres. They're put in through a system. It's all all set up just to process them and release them under parole or a notice to appear, which is an absolute abomination and a violation of both the letter and the spirit of the law. Uh, It's being done purposely. It's abusive. They're the ones moving human beings and trafficking human beings, and the blood is on their hands. The little girl getting raped in a stash house as we speak. The American that is dying from fentanyl poisoning as we speak. The people who are going to be endangered by the criminals you alluded to coming from Venezuela or across this world, the terrorists you're talking about, it's just a matter of time. And Republicans ought to stand up and fight for the American people. I will tell you, this sheriff in Bear County, um, oh. that is, is investigating, is he the FBI now? Investigating what happened in Florida with DeSantis flying these people up. He doesn't, he doesn't claim anything is illegal. He just says, I don't know, it doesn't feel right. When are we in basing investigations on feelings? Second of all, this is the same guy who in his county, you had, what, 50 people die in the back of a truck. Did he care about that? Well, you know, it's a really good point. Uh, and, you know, I've got a great relationship with a lot of the line of uh, police officers in San Antonio, uh, some sheriff's deputies. Uh, this is nothing more than Sheriff Salazar playing politics and doing so in a way that would endanger Texans. I want to be very clear to any, any of my listeners out there in, in, in San Antonio, my constituents, this is an absolute abomination what the sheriff is doing. He should be challenged for it. Uh, he should be you know, removed from office and someone needs to go take him down uh, to, in terms of his political career. And we should replace him with somebody else. It's absurd. You have 53 people, as you said, dying in a tractor trailer in San Antonio. You have people that uh, that we can't even get a lot of our cases brought on drug crimes because they don't prosecute them, because liberals have taken over the DA's office, and because you've got uh, this kind of weak leadership. We need strong leadership in our cities to root out crime, and we don't need these kind of po- political games where this is very specific going after DeSantis, because DeSantis is daring to say that we ought to highlight this uh, by – uh, you know, moving people around the country uh, so that people can understand what's happening to Texas and to Florida and to other states that are bearing the brunt of this. It's absurd. I don't even I, I, how how do cities claim to be sanctuary cities and then say, oh, we don't we can't take these people. How How is that possible? Well, that, well, that was the D.C. councilwoman. I can't remember her name who said, oh. You know, she was one complaining, other turning us into a border town. Like, Hold on a second. You called for the abolition of ICE. You were out lauding D.C. as far back as six or seven years ago. You and, and, and Muriel Bowser, the, the uh, mayor here, saying you're a sanctuary city. And you're complaining about 100 being dropped off 
We're getting three or 4,000 a day rolling across the border in Texas uh, that are being apprehended, not even counting the gotaways. I mean, the extent to which people are burying their head in the sand. And I want to go back to the fentanyl crisis because I've seen four people die in Hayes County, which I represent. I've seen people high profile or people not, uh, you know, the people don't know. And what talking to moms, I was at a round table last week with 12 moms who have all buried their kids mm. because of fentanyl poisoning. And the American people don't understand. We're talking about pills. We're talking about one pill can kill because it was cooked up in a, in a cartel backyard funded by Chinese fentanyl. We actually had some law enforcement in Harris County the other day who mistakenly took a pill because it looked like candy that was laced with fentanyl that they had from product. I mean, I'm telling you, people don't know what's happening. In the 80s, Glenn, the cocaine epidemic that we had, 10,000 people dying a year. We're talking 107,000 deaths from opioids and and, and drugs last year, 72,000 of it is fentanyl. It's a major problem, and it's because we're not securing a border. So I just I, I would like to add something. I had fentanyl um, when I was in the hospital and it almost killed me. And I read the box that it comes in. It was a patch. My wife could not touch the patch when she was putting it on because it could kill her just by putting her finger where the fentanyl was. OK, that's how dangerous it is. On the box, it says for end of life use only. We have, remember, it doesn't take a lot to kill you. 2,300 pounds of fentanyl came across our southern border in August. That's 100 pounds more than July. And 13,000 pounds this year. What are we doing, America? Hey, Glenn, to be clear, and, and, and that those numbers are exactly right from the perspective of Border Patrol apprehension, but that does not count what got through. That Jeez. does not count what is coming along with the got, known gotaways. That does not count what DPS in Texas, our law enforcement, have intercepted after it's gotten past Border Patrol. In other words, the numbers are massively higher than even that. And when you look at fentanyl, just so everybody understands, one to two milligrams can kill you. That fits on the end of a pencil. That's what we're talking about. When I say one pill can kill, every listener out there, forget politics for a minute. Go make sure that your children, your grandchildren, your loved ones, the people that you care about know this. You take a Xanax, you take a Adderall, you take something that looks like candy. If it's laced with fentanyl, you die. And it is, uh, it is getting distributed throughout our country. We stopped two girls in Arizona about two months ago with 500,000 pills in their car. In Texas, we stopped a car with 100,000 pills in it. This is a direct consequence of this administration, but I want to be equally uh, uh, critical. It's Republicans funding the government that is carrying out this tyranny against the American people in the form of open borders, hiring IRS agents, uh, having our energy uh, getting absolutely destroyed by this administration, continuing vaccine mandates, which are harming our men and women in the military, uh, we have got to stop uh, enabling this, Glenn. Republicans, we can stop it. Just stop. Not one more penny. Why would you fund the very things you campaign against? That's what I don't understand about Republicans. So I'm going to keep doing it. And credit to Kevin McCarthy yesterday. Kevin said, hey, if they're not going to do anything about the border, we should not be voting to fund this CR. That's a big statement. That's a big a statement. I, I'd like to see him back it up. I, he'd have my support if he backs that up. Uh, I'm not sure he has the the courage and cojones to do it. Uh, being from Texas, you know what that means. But uh, mm-hmm. I hope that he does. I hope the Republicans actually mean what they say. Chip Roy from the great state of Texas um, in the U.S. House. Thank you so much. I appreciate it, Chip. By the way, you have to square your shoulders and stand up straight. You are on the right side of history. You are on the right side. It is so clear, this battle of good versus evil. Who is actually helping people traffic children? Is it DeSantis and the GOP? Or is it this government that is, that is turning its blind eye and allowing the cartels, allowing China to come in with boatloads of fentanyl?
Our children are at risk. And what are we fighting about? We're fighting another evil, having, having a debate on whether or not you can mutilate our children in a hospital. You're on the right side of history.